<clears throat> hey y'all, what's good? Good morning. Headed to work early this time. I spent the night at my friend's house last night and woke up at three something in the morning. Anytime I wake up naturally through the night, if I have enough energy, I drive back home. When I got back home, I thought that uh, I would take an hour, you know, nap. But I got home and of course Maggie has gotten into something. She's figured out how to, so Sula has a room uh, and that part of the house is like basically quartered off so Maggie can't get to it. That way Sula can feel safe and her food and water and litter box and all that will be safe from Maggie because Maggie will eat all of Sula's food. And I got home and Maggie had figured out how to get through my force field. So I had to buttress it and move some furniture around, which means I didn't get my nap. So I got ready a lot quicker than I had anticipated. So here I am now. I'm gonna be early to work at 15 minutes, which is good because it probably take me 15 minutes plus just to make my hot drink and breakfast but I forgot my cream of wheat at my friend's house and that's what I usually eat for breakfast during the winter time although today is supposed to be 84 degrees here but it's still gonna be cold in the office y'all know the white folks like to keep it cold even when it's cold outside and I got on this little thin sweater but I do have me an electric blanket do I now I got a couple of blankets at my desk now. They said we can have space heaters. So I'm just like, oh, hey, man. Anyway, now what I want to talk about, but y'all know I have to give y'all an introduction to my morning. Sorry. Um, what I want to talk about is what keeps a man from seeing his kids? The impetus or the, yeah, the impetus for this or the catalyst for this is a video I made a while ago. Uh, and I, I want to go through and, and I, I feel like women know this and I feel like maybe men need to hear this. Maybe the women in their lives aren't telling them this for whatever reason. They, you know, that's their son, that's their, uh, you know, their nephew, their whatever. So nobody's telling them this. They didn't grow up under the same circumstances I did. Uh, so they don't see the outcomes of not being in their child's life. But the excuse that I'm, you know, hearing of why, you know, uh, a man can't be in their child's life is uh, their mom won't let me. The, the mom is jealous of the relationship I have with another woman, so she won't let me. Or she's crazy and vindictive and dramatic. And while all those things may be true, and I can very well see, you know, just from my interactions with, you know, women, that those things may be true. Let me tell you what really stops a man from seeing his child and and y'all know I, I i know a lot of y'all think i deal with it in extremes but that's because life has been extreme with me these are the people that can't see their children people that are incarcerated people that have committed crimes against their children people with restraining orders against their children people who have had their parental rights taken away by the government people who are sex offenders uh, and even with them being a sex offender, they can still see their children under certain circumstances. Those are the people that can't see children. So excuses like, oh, she's bitter because I'm with another woman or she's mad because I'm with another woman so she won't let me and my family see my child. I'm sorry, but yeah, you gotta find someone else to tell that excuse to. You don't see your child because you don't see your child. Let me put it like this. If someone came and committed murder on your property, they killed someone else on your property, guess what would happen? The government, i.e. the police department, the detectives would find every possible, they would follow every possible lead to find the person who committed that crime to bring them to justice. You know why? Because it's a serious offense. Killing someone is one of the most serious offenses you can do. In fact, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. So, to me, when you bring a child into the world, it's that serious. If a judge has not told you, you can't see your kids, if you haven't moved heaven and earth, if you haven't gone in front of a judge to make to make a judge make you see your kids, to make your bitter baby mama or whatever uh, let you see your kids, 
then don't don't tell me oh she won't let me because I you know what you do you do men do what they want to do no woman is not letting a man do anything I don't care how vindictive a woman is how petty she is how whatever men do what they want to do if so like, like I said if someone came on your property and killed someone you love you would want to see that person brought to justice and my my second question is what are you going to say to that child when they become an adult and they come and knock on your door one day and want to know why you weren't in their life? Are you going to tell them, well, your mama wouldn't let me because she was bitter, petty, and vindictive, or we couldn't work it out? I told you guys about my experience with that. I, you know, at 40, I knocked on my dad's door and I wanted to hear his side of the story. I heard my mom's side of the story. I wanted to hear his side of the story. Why is it you were never in my life? <clears throat> What you're not gonna say to a child who has become a, a man or an adult and you were never in their lives, you, you weren't married to their parent, to their parent that raised them, they didn't see you every day the same way, the way you had the privilege of growing up and tell them, oh, you, you're, whoever raised you, your mom in this instance, uh, was you know, petty and vindictive and bitter and wouldn't let me and my family see you. That's why I wasn't in your life. Because what that child is gonna do is one of two things. They're gonna remember all the years they were sick or they were in extracurricular activities or they needed X, Y, Z, all the things that go with raising a child on an everyday basis. And they're gonna remember it was their mom that was there doing those things. That's one of the things that are gonna happen. And there's another outcome that can happen too. But like I said, if a judge has not told you you can't see your kids because you've done something so egregious to that child, then you can see your kids. There's no excuse, absolutely none. Um, unfortunately, I think people don't really take to heart the importance of the role of parenting. I think unfortunately in our community, especially, People look at a kid and say, well, they got one parent, I, the baby mama crazy, you know. She wasn't crazy when you was getting her pregnant, when you decided to go raw and, and not make sure things like this don't happen. But now, you know, you don't want to be with her. Now she's crazy and vindictive. You know, it kills me how that transition happens. When women go crazy and vindictive and petty, it's, it's because you promised them something that you didn't deliver on. That's what makes them go crazy and vindictive and all that. I'm, I'm a living witness of a man telling me, I'm going to make you my wife and, and just lying, just telling me a dream to get something from me. You know what I mean? I eat my body or my attention or my love and affection. You know what I mean? Um, so a, a lot of times I think men think, oh, well, their, their mom's there and their mom's family's there, so they're gonna be all right. Oh, it all depends on what you call. All right. To me, growing up without one of your parents in the house is growing up under duress. Growing up in a single parent family, which I call a father abandoned family, is growing up under duress. Even if your grandmother and, and your mother are both, you know, stable financially, it's still growing up under duress. Every child, every person is made in the the image of their parents. I look nothing like my mother. I look just like my father, but I act just like my mother. Growing up, and even though I met my father like about five years ago, it'll be five years this year, even though I look like him, I grew up my whole life wondering why is it I don't, I don't, I never felt like I looked like my family. You know what I mean? And then I met my father and I was like, oh, okay, this is who I look like, but I act like my mother. You know what I mean? I could just never understand why God was, you know, why he didn't let me look like her too. And because I never knew what my dad looked like, you know? So, you know, it, it, it concerns me when I hear men, you know, men use an excuse that, oh, the, the baby mama's mad because I didn't stay with her. So that's why she won't let me see my kid. This, she won't let me. She won't let me. That's the excuse we're using is she won't let me. I didn't know women had that much power. I didn't know that, you know, a woman could 
create a force field, a physical force field where you cannot see. You know, it's like, like I said, people do what they want to do. They prioritize what they want to prioritize. Whether you prioritize a new relationship with a new woman, overseeing your child, there's two things you have to think about. One is relationships come and go. Women come and go, marriages come and go. There's one relationship that never comes and goes. One relationship is permanent, and that's the relationship of child and parent. That's a relationship that cannot be undone under any circumstances. Nobody can unmake someone your biological parent. When you get old and you, for whatever reason, you can't take yourself to the bathroom, uh, you're bedridden it is usually the child that you had that is going to be the person you depend on so you can think oh yeah but I have other kids I was good too they'll take care of me that's what you think it, wouldn't it be better to have all your kids feel oh, am I supposed to turn up there wouldn't it be better to have all your kids have an affinity for you that they all can think my my parent was good to me so you don't have to like gamble that well only one or two of my kids will be there for me she's so where else are you see i'm trying to go what is she doing oh i can't stand people it's just not self-aware at all um I, I just wouldn't want to gamble with that. I, I, I told you guys, I saw my, my grandmother. She she became bedridden in her old age. And she gave birth to a whole lot of kids. I mean, she was birthing kids from the womb to the tomb. You know, from teenage years to, I think, her 30s. She 30s or 40s. Let me see. I think she had the youngest kid when she was in her 30s. The oldest kid when she was in her 30s. So her her childbearing years was 20 plus years of birthing kids. Out of all them kids she gave birth to, but biologically gave birth to, I can count on one finger how many I saw change, and I couldn't even stand to see it or smell it, how many I saw change her diaper. Same thing with other people in my family that I've seen bedridden. I can count on one finger how many was there for them when their, when their parent was bedridden and couldn't move around, no longer had their physical, you know, faculties. Same parent raised all these kids, but only one of them was there for them. So it's like, do you even want to take that chance? Relationships come and go. I'm sorry, but I feel like once you bring a kid in the world, if you're not married to any, you know, romantic interest, your kids should come first. Kid come before a relationship. There's no way I'm going to put my, my relationship with my child under a relationship with someone who's not my spouse and when i say spouse i mean my married spouse my husband or wife there's just no way and i say that that there's no way because i have been done that way and and when it's all said and done and and the parent get old and and whatever it is that comes with getting old you know all them boyfriends and, and all them people you put above your child baby <laughs> they they gone they gone, gone. What? Uh, <laughs> but one of the singers say, "You're wrong, wrong, wrong." I think it's Erica Badu. Just all them lovers, all them uh, everybody you thought was so important. So you know, you you just had to go live your best life and just drop me off with whoever could watch me. And they couldn't even really watch me. Really, it was just kids watching each other, you know, and committing atrocities to other weaker kids. You know, those things have an impact on children. So, you know, it's like, miss me with the, she won't let me see my kids. It's like you barking up the wrong tree with that one. I'm, that's, that's a excuse. You'll never, I, it, it, you better be on some kind of sex offender registry with a, a, a bag of felonies, a, a file of felonies against children to ever convince me or incarcerated with some handcuffs in, uh, or some to, to convince me you can't see your kids or somebody won't let you see your kids because I've been around people who can't see their kids I have a friend who's locked up who won't get out for another 10 years and she can't see her kids her you know matter of fact her kids are grown now she's been in prison for 20 years for killing one of her kids that's somebody that couldn't see their kids because she killed one of her kids or she says she didn't kill the kid you know her boyfriend killed a kid but she went down with him, you know, 
that's people that can't see their kids. Saying somebody is vindictive and mean and petty and crazy because you don't want to be with them no more, yo, miss me with that. You'll see the percussions in the long run if you're lucky to be alive in the long run. You know, I, I just wouldn't take my chances with that. I'm, I'm just a living witness of seeing people have a whole bunch of kids, raise them right, do them right, all that, and only one of the kids come and see about their parents, change a diaper, take them to hospital appointments, uh, ain't trying to fleece them for their little, you know, monthly check or whatever. My grandmother, she was on a fixed income. They, you know, kids that she raised, and she didn't raise all her kids, but the few that she raised, you know, trying to, them and their progeny, trying to, you know, sticker for her little papers that she do have. And these are able-bodied adults, you know. It, it's just sad, y'all. You know. Um, so, like I said, the women, who, and it's women that listen to me, men typically don't like my channel. Uh, especially certain kind of men don't like my channel, and I'm fine with that. But women know these things, because the women that listen to my channel, even the ones that are uh, parents with children outside of wedlock, they've lived some of these experiences. Even if they don't like all I have to say about, you know, uh, black males. You know, I had lunch with a, uh, a friend the other day and I was saying something about them and, and she has black male children. And she said, but, but not all, you know, <laughs> you know, cause of course they don't think of their son, you know, like, you know, thinking and praying and hoping that they son don't, don't do some woman like that, you know, not all. And I'd be one to think, girl, hasn't every man has ever put his penis in you been one of those, you know, <laughs> like girl, okay. but I didn't say nothing. I just said, you know, I just listening, but the stuff that I'm telling y'all about y'all know, if you are a woman, if you have ovaries, if you were born a woman, you know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me you can't see your kids because some woman won't let you. And you are able-bodied, strong man can lift stuff, you know. <laughs> Come on with it. College degree on top of college degree. Don't tell me a woman won't let you see your kids. I, I ain't having it. If you don't want that kid to end up broken, end up in a penitentiary, end up on some therapist's couch, end up coming to live with you because they can't hold down a job because they never had a, a male role model in their life. And, they, and it shouldn't even be about a male role model. It should be about their father. A kid should see their father every day. When a kid wakes up in the morning, guess what they should wake up to? Both of their parents. Both of their parents being married. Both of their parents sane. Both of their parents being able to take care of them financially and emotionally. That's what a kid should wake up to every day. If you cannot provide a kid with that, stop having sex unprotected. Stop going bra in women you are not married to. It's that simple. And you won't have these problems. Men, period. And it's usually, unfortunately, men that look like me that have these excuses that are what we would call deadbeat dads. Other men take care of their kids, whether they are married to the woman or not. But what they definitely don't do is say, well, my, you know, she won't let me see my kids. Cause they gonna see their kids regardless. You ain't gonna, oh, a white man is not gonna say what a, a white woman ain't gonna let him do. He's not gonna even take on that. And I, y'all know I've dated plenty of white men, plenty of nine, but I never, ever, never heard one of them say, uh, Becky Sue or uh, Sunita or, or whoever won't let them see their kids. They gonna get their kids every other weekend, whatever, the, you know, the divorce decree say, uh, even if they gotta meet in a public place uh, with a, what do they call it? With a monitor there or at the police station so that there's no drama. I've yeah, seen it all. I've seen it where literally there's always so much drama at the exchange that they have to literally have the exchange at the police department. But that's how determined a father has been to see his kids. He gonna get his kids every other weekend, even if they got exchanged the kid at the police station so there's no drama. You know what I mean? So don't, don't, don't tell me you can't see your kids because a woman won't bless you. That's, that's a rookie mistake, you know? You gotta, you gotta say that for, for somebody, you know, I almost said say that for somebody that got a GED, but you got to say that for somebody that, you know, 
a, a sneak with it that don't know better. A 17 year old child that I just don't know better or something. Cause I, baby mama, I'm too grown and long in, in the tooth for that. I know, I know better. I told y'all my experience in that 18 years of my childhood, my father came to try to see me twice two times and because my relationship with my mother and my grandmother was so volatile both times my grandmother acted like she didn't know who my mama was and wouldn't give the message to me you know it's like even if my mother didn't want me to see my father for whatever reason I felt like my grandmother could have told me your father came by here to see you. just so little cat little bitty broken cat broken way oh lord i'm about to start crying so i'm gonna have to stop because y'all know got no full face makeup but just a little broken cat could have known that they that the, the person who helped create me cared at least twice enough to come try to see about me you know what i mean oh let me get off this soapbox because i'm my, my eyes are watering up and i got on a face full of makeup so Y'all, the last video I took down because my face was showing in it for a millisecond. And uh, shout out to Lainey for telling me. Uh, I ain't went through to edit that out yet. And, and who knows when I'm a good time. It's, it's been busy. It's a busy life. It is a busy life. And y'all, so remember I told y'all about the Mexican dude that's doing repairs for me. And he was like, oh, can you, I, I can you, my dad says, can you at least give me money for this? Can you at least give me money for that? And da, da, da. So... I was supposed to give him like $68 yesterday and that y'all, all I had was 65 and that, you know, so I got 40 out and I took it down to him and I had to have one of his, somebody, whoever was at the house translate and I said, you know, he was basically saying that he has to pay the men that did the work on the house with him and I told his, whoever was translating, yeah, when I hired him, I didn't know he was like subcontracting the work out, so that's basically, that's not my problem, he, I hired him to do the work, not, if he couldn't do the work, he should have just told me that instead of saying, you know, he could do the work and then he hired other people. I was wondering why it was so much, you know, I was like, in my mind, I had a price and what he quoted me was way more, but I didn't get a price from a company as a, you know, because he usually gives me a, you know, a decent deal on stuff. So that's why I didn't think too much of it. I just thought, well, maybe. And then I'm finding out, he, oh yeah, he, he hired three other people. And I'm like thinking, well, he couldn't do the job if he hired three other people. Who? He's like, oh no, it's a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I told him the date I needed it done by. And that was like a date in March, y'all. It ain't even March yet. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, so my homegirl told me, the one I went out to eat with the other day, she said, you know, her mother did, the way she would hire, like when she had to hire Mexicans or basically, you know, people to do work for her not you know companies with contracts or whatever the way she would do it is she would write down whatever they were supposed to do and agreed upon price and whenever she paid them she had them sign it and date it you know on the days that they would receive the pay and all this kind of stuff and I was like I, I might have to start doing that from now on Oh my, this might be my last project to have him do for me other than just cutting my yard every every month because this has been really frustrating. And so, you know, when I told the guy that translates, you know, well, I, I didn't know when I hired him, he was doing, you know, hiring out other people. He was like, oh, well, he said, you know, he just wanted you to know that they were waiting and, you know, he can wait, but he just wanted you to know. And I'm thinking... He should have told me when I hired him that he couldn't do the work or it was too much work for one person or whatever. And he was just like, because I asked him, I didn't ask him to do the work. I said, do you know someone who can do this? And he said, I can do it. So I'm assuming he could do it. Oh, y'all, just, just why? Lord have mercy. It's like, if it ain't one thing, it's another. So I was like, okay, well, I get paid next week. When I get paid next week, I'll give him some more money, you know, but we had agreed when he did this work for me that I had to the end of March to pay him the full amount, you know. I didn't know I was paying four different people to do this work. And I'm thinking, girl, that's why it costs so much because he's paying four different people. So he probably paying each of them a few hundred dollars and himself. That's why, girl. Oh, wait, man. And this is the stuff I mean about, you know, this is when it, stuff like this is when it's great to be married to a man, you know that can afford to just have stuff done like this and you ain't got to worry about, you know, 
dealing with I mean don't get me wrong you even if you're married if you're a housewife you still might have to do this kind of stuff but it, it just to me it just seemed like I just remember when when Ben and I were married and people would have you know plumbers whoever would have to come to the house you know whenever Ben was there it just it just seemed like it was a lot less nonsense like that like oh he had to hide you know they just wouldn't do stuff like that to me and it's like if they said it was a price that was the price it wasn't no oh i need fifty dollars uh to paint it like well i thought the color matching was a part of the deal when we when i paid for the services and oh y'all but don't get me wrong i was telling my um my same home girl that you know i had lunch with that it, it's still a blessing is i had um church church was like super duper good this particular sunday and i i don't even know the song that they were singing but it, it just put me in the spirit i really love those slow songs and it, it was putting me in the mind of saying something like it could have been so much worse and and it's not as bad as it could have been only because of you God something to that effect and I think about my life and I think about what life has been like since I've been home and I was talking to my girlfriend about that about what I thought my life would be like when I moved home you know based on just all the conversations that I had with my grandmother and stuff when I was away and I literally thought my life when I moved home would be me living with my grandmother taking care of my cousin uh, until she became an adult inheriting my grandmother's house and that and me working in fast food that that would be my life for the rest of my life and my life looks so different you know than I thought it would look and it's like that's nothing but God so it's like even with all that's that's not the way I thought it would be it's still better than I anticipated or would have thought and it's like but I'm still not complacent I still want better you know, but I'm still grateful to God for just all that he does, you know, even in spite of everything, in spite of, you know, all the other issues. So anyway, um, I will holler at y'all later. I done made it to the office. Child, look at this, 14 minutes early. God, child, we ain't had this happen since, Woo. Lord, I don't know, some months. So let me get in here and uh, make my... I ain't even got to make no hot drink because I got one that's still hot. So anyway, I'll holler at y'all later. Y'all be easy, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what y'all think. Be easy. Bye.